146. And today, we're going to read Leviticus chapter 7 and chapter 8. But first, welcome to Religion Wing TV, where my spiritual ears stay. Now, welcome guys. We're reading from Bible Gate. King James Version, chapter 7 and 8, and basically you guys know why we do this, because some people like to read people to filth, but we like to read people to life, that's life more abundantly, through the Messiah Christ, and also we know people are physically, spiritually blind, physically, spiritually deaf, they don't perceive, comprehend, understand what they read. Some people are mad and hate God for whatever reason and walked away from the Bible and church and so on and so forth. And then you have the lost souls, the demonic souls who have an opportunity to repent if they want to. And people like you and I that need this word to stand on, to live by, and to guide us in life. And with that being said, don't forget your Bibles and your teacups. Let's read Leviticus 7, chapter 1. Likewise, this is the law of the trespass offering. It is most holy. 2. In the place where they kill the burnt offering, they shall kill the trespass offering. And the blood thereof shall he sprinkle round about upon the altar. 3. And he shall offer it in all of the fat thereof, the rump and the fat that covereth the inwards. Four, and the two kidneys and the fat that is on them, which is by the flanks, and the caul that is above the liver, with the kidneys, it shall he take away, right? And we know why two morning reads ago, right? Five, and the priest shall burn them upon the altar for an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a trespass offering. Six, every male among the priests shall eat thereof. It shall be eaten in the holy place. It is most holy. Seven, as the sin offering is, so the trespass offering. There is one law for them. The priest that maketh atonement therewith shall have it. Let's see what 8 says, y'all. So 8 says, In the priest that offereth any man's burnt offering, even the priest shall have to himself the skin of the burnt offering which he hath offered. 9. And all of the meat offering that is in the bacon, that is bacon in the oven, and all that is dressed in a frying pan and in a pan, we got frying pan and pan, shall be the priest that offereth it. 10. And every meat offering mingled with oil and dry shall of the sons of Aaron have one as much as another. 11. And this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings which he shall offer unto the Lord, which Paul says do away with these laws in Christianity. So how are you offering anything to the Lord, really? 12. If he offer it for a thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of thanksgiving unleavened cakes mingled with oil and unleavened wafers anointed with oil and cakes mingled with oil and fine flour fried. And I tell you, it's some bread in this world. And I'm not really talking about hot water cornbread. Yes, that is the best. But there's just a regular bread on top of the stove in a cast iron skillet. You can fry with that oil, baby. And it is so good. Anyway, it goes on to say in 13, besides the cakes, he shall offer for his offering leavened bread with the sacrifice of thanksgiving of his peace offerings 14 and of it he shall offer one out of the whole oblation for an heave offering unto the lord and it shall be the priest that sprinkled the blood sprinkle it ongoing the blood of the peace offering let's see what 15 has to say 
And the flesh of the sacrifice of the peace offering for thanksgiving shall be eaten in the same the same day that it is offered. He shall not leave any of it until the morning. Remember the manna. Take enough for today. Don't leave none. Don't just just just, eat, just be be obedient, right? 16. But if the sacrifice of his offering be a vow or a voluntary offering, it shall be eaten the same day that the offering to his sacrifice. And on the morrow, also the remainder of it shall be eaten. See, this isn't like the manna, though. Some of this stuff can be eaten on the next day. 17. But the remainder of the flesh of the sacrifice on the third day shall be burnt with fire. 18. And if and y'all leave y'all leftovers to seven days, I don't know. <laughs> this isn't quite leftovers, but the leftovers of this act right here got to be burnt with fire on the third day. 18. And if any of the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings be eaten all on the third day, it shall not be accepted. Neither shall it be imputed unto him that offer it, offereth it. It shall be an abomination, and the soul that eateth of it shall bear his iniquity. 19. And the flesh that toucheth any unclean thing shall not be eaten. It shall be burnt with fire. And as for the flesh, all that be clean shall eat thereof. 20. But the soul that eateth of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings that pertain unto the Lord, having his uncleanness upon him, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. Wow. Wow. 21. Moreover, the soul that shall touch any unclean thing, as the unclean thing of man, or any unclean beast, or any abominable unclean thing, and eat of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offering, which pertain unto the Lord, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. Question, dear Lord. Are dead people unclean things because I have touched dead people in my past? So 22, and the Lord speak unto Moses, saying, Speak. 23, unto the children of Israel, saying, Ye shall eat no manner of fat, of ox, or of sheep, or of goats. 24, and the fat of the beast that dieth of itself, and the fat of that which is torn with beasts, may be used in any other use, but ye shall in no wise eat of it. You can make hair grease, you could go out sunbathing, put this stuff on, but you can't eat it, okay? So, 25 says, For whosoever eateth the fat of the beast, of which men offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, even the soul that eateth it, shall be cut off from his people. 26, Moreover, ye shall eat no manner of blood, whether it be a fowl or a beast in any of your dwellings, and then you're in church eating the blood, drinking the body, eating the body and drinking the blood of Jesus. Something isn't right here, y'all. 27, who do you believe? God here or Paul there in Christianity? 27. Uh, excuse me, y'all. 27, whosoever soul it be that eateth any manner of blood, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. You know how many people are cut off from God and their people because they eat the body of Christ and drink the blood of Jesus in church? 28. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, 29. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, he that offereth the sacrifice of his peace offerings unto the Lord shall bring his oblation unto the Lord of the sacrifice of his peace offerings. 30. His own hands shall bring the offerings of the Lord made by fire, that fat with the breast it shall he bring, that the breast may be waved for a wave offering before the Lord. 31. 
And the priest shall burn. And I think in episode 340 or 339, we talk about the wave offering. So, uh, 31. And the priest shall burn the fade upon the altar, but the breast shall be Aaron's and his son's. 32. And the right shoulder shall ye give unto the priest for an eve offering of the sacrifices of your peace offerings. 33. He among the sons of Aaron that offereth the blood of the peace offerings and the fat shall have the right shoulder for his part. 34. For the wave breast. In the heaved shoulder have I taken of the children of Israel from the sacrifices of their peace offerings, and have given them unto Aaron the priest and unto his sons by a statue forever from among the children of Israel. 35 says, This is the portion of the anointing of Aaron and the anointing of his sons out of the offerings of the Lord made by fire, in the day when he presented them to minister unto the Lord in the priest's office. 36 says, Which the Lord commanded to be given them of the children of Israel in the day that he anointed them by the statute forever throughout their generations. 38. This is the law of the burnt offering, of the meat offering, and the sin offering, and of the trespass offering of the consecrations of the sacrifice of the peace offering. Verse 38, which the Lord commanded Moses in Mount Sinai in the day that he commanded the children of Israel to offer their oblations unto the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. Going right into chapter 8, verse 1. Let's read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, 2. Take Aaron and his sons with him, and the garments, and the anointing of oil, and a bullock for the sin offering, and two rams, and a basket of unleavened bread. 3. And gather thou all the congregation together unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. 4. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him. An assembly was gathered together unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. 5. And Moses said unto the congregation, This is the thing which the Lord commanded to be done. 6. And Moses brought Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. 7. And he put upon him the coat and girded him with the girdle, and clothed him with the robe, and put the ephod upon him, and he girded him with the curious girdle of the ephod. What is that curious girdle of the ephod, that sachet, right, sash thing? And bound it unto him therewith, eight. And he put the breastplate upon him. Also he put in the breastplate the urim and the thummim. Verse 9, And he put the matri upon his head, also upon the matri, even upon his forefront, did he put the golden plate, the holy crown, as the Lord commanded Moses. 10, And Moses took the anointing oil, and anointed the tabernacle of all that was therein, and sanctified them. 11, And he sprinkled thereof upon the altar seven times, and anointed the altar and all his vessels, both the lavar and his foot, to sanctify them. 12. And he poured of the anointing oil upon Aaron's head, and anointed him to sanctify him. 13. Well, we know some priest is rubbing the oil all over the ladies, allegedly, right? And, 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 and we've heard this story. I covered it. Laying on them, telling them it's of God. They got to give them a full body oil rub, damn near butt naked, right? So they can have a relationship with God. This isn't what God is talking about here, okay? <laughs> I don't know what the church is doing over there, but that's not of God. 
So he sanctifies them, right? And he pours the anointing over Aaron's head, right? 13, and Moses brought Aaron's sons and put coats upon them and girded them with girdles and put bonnets upon them as the Lord commanded Moses. Now, why was not Moses the priesthood and Aaron? Can anyone answer that question down below? 14, and he brought the bullock for the sin offering. And Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the bullock for the sin offering. 15, and he slew it. And Moses took the blood and put it upon the horns of the altar round about with his finger and purified the altar and poured the blood uh, at the bottom of the altar and sanctified it to make reconciliation upon it. Now we are at verse 16. And it took all of the fat that was upon the inwards and the call above the liver and the two kidneys and their fat and Moses burned it upon the altar. 17. But the bullock and his hide, his flesh and his dung, he burnt with fire without the camp as the Lord commanded Moses. 18. And he brought the ram for, for the burnt offering and Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram. 19. And he killed it. And Moses sprinkled the blood upon the altar round about. 20. And he cut the ram into pieces, and Moses burnt the head, and the pieces, and the fat. 21. And he washed the inwards and the legs in water, and Moses burnt the whole ram upon the altar. It was a burnt sacrifice for a sweet savor, and an offering made by fire unto the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. 22. And he brought the other ram, the ram of consecration, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram. 23. And he slew it, and Moses took the blood of it and put it upon the tip of Aaron's right ear and put it upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the great toe of his right foot. Let's see what 24 has to say. And he brought Aaron's sons, and Moses put the blood upon the tip of their right ear, upon the thumbs of their right hands, and upon the great toes of their right feet. And Moses sprinkled the blood upon the altar round about. Is it possible because Aaron had more children than Moses that he got to become the priesthood? Is it possible that God wanted Moses to be his messenger and not his high priest? Is it possible that Moses and Elijah, because they went on a Mount of Transfiguration, had a whole different calling, right? Absolutely, could be. So, 25 says, And he took the fat and the rump and all that the fat was upon the inwards and the call above the liver and the two kidneys and their fat at the right shoulder 26 and out of the basket of unleavened bread that was before the lord he took one unleavened cake and a cake of oil bread and one wafer and you know you like them chocolate strawberry and vanilla wafers honey and put them on the fat and upon the right shoulder. And they probably got a whole lot of fat in them, y'all. But they are some good things, huh? I love them little wafers. All three flavors. The Napoleon uh, wafers. You have your chocolate, your vanilla, and your strawberry, right? So it goes on to say... 25, and he took the fat and the rump and all that was that was upon the inwards, the call above the liver and the two kidneys and their fat and the right shoulder, 26. And out of the basket of unleavened bread, that was before the Lord. He took one unleavened cake and a cake of oil bread and one wafer and put them on the fat and upon the right shoulder, 27. And he put all, and he put upon, and he put all upon Aaron's hands and upon his son's hands, and waved them for a wave offering. 
You think like the lead attorney be doing when he waving his hands. Talking about the lead attorney here <laughs> before the Lord, right? 28. And Moses took them from off their hands and burnt them on the altar upon the burnt offering. They were consecrations for his sweet savor. It is an offering made by fire unto the Lord. 29. And Moses took the breast and waved it for a wave offering before the Lord. For of the ram of consecration, it was Moses' part, as the Lord commanded Moses. Now we are here on 30. And we only have to go to 36. And Moses took the anointing oil and the blood which was upon the altar and sprinkled it upon Aaron and upon his garments and upon his sons and upon his sons' garments with him and sanctified Aaron and his garments and his sons and his sons' garments with him. 31. And Moses said unto Aaron and to his sons, Boil the flesh at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and there eat it with the bread that is in the basket of consecration, as I commanded, saying, Aaron and his sons shall eat. 32. And that which remaineth of the flesh and of the bread shall ye burn with fire. 33. And ye shall not go out into the door of the tabernacle or the congregation in seven days, until the days of your consecration be at the end. For seven days shall he consecrate you. 34. As he had done this day, so the Lord hath commanded to do, to make an atonement for you. 35. Therefore shall ye abide at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation day and night, seven days, and keep the charge of the Lord that ye die not, for so I am commanded. 36. So Aaron and his sons did all the things which the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. And not once did God speak directly to Aaron and or his sons. And with that being said, this is ending the morning read, guys. Episode 346. May God bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Lift his face up upon you. His countenance rest on you. And his shalom peace be in you, on you, and all around you. And with that being said, have a blessed day, everyone. And take care.